while Bill and I were at the factory, I uh, get asked questions a lot about our new FH as compared to our AH, our flagship, uh, our, our, our highest output point and shoot loudspeaker. And uh, I thought while we were here that we do, do some disassembly and talk a little bit about the technology differentials. If you'll notice, this is a 30 inch horn, horn within a horn. Also, you'll notice that the bell of both of these horns is the same. So the, uh, there's a lot of similarities in how the hardware goes together, the horn within a horn design. Uh, this is a 32 inch horn. This is the AH, the AH65. And we've got uh, it, it apart, the grill off of both so you can kind of see what's going on inside. But I wanna just point out the two differentials. Um, high frequency horn is the same in both. Both use a very similar diaphragm on the compression driver. Uh, a slightly larger uh, external magnet compression driver on the AH, so the, the magnet is on the outside of the, of the voice coil. And on the FH, it's, it's actually internal, so the, the, allowing the, the outside of the compression driver to be smaller because we're using it as the, the face plug for the 15-inch woofer. But both are 4-inch coil, same power output compression drivers, so, so both very similar high-frequency sections. Horn size is very similar, 30 inch horn here, 32 inch horn on the AH. So pattern control on both is down in the four or 500 range uh, to maintain nominal pattern control. But the big differential is the low frequency section. This, the FH as you can see, now this is on a demonstration stand. It does not come with this, uh, just like the AH is hanging from one of our U brackets. Doesn't come with the U bracket, but it is available. Uh, it's a deeper cabinet, the FH because it's got a single 15, and you can kind of take a peek behind the horn there and see the cone of the 15-inch woofer. This allows the FH to play more deeply, so it, it has deeper bass extension, but it's slightly less output capable than the AH is. The AH uh, is capable of about 5 dB more overall output, and that's just because what, uh, this is one of our other exclusive technologies, I'm spinning it here, and I've removed the back, uh, the back, what we call the compression head, that's this piece. And so what we've, we've done, or what Dave's done, is with the introduction of the compression head technology, these are our, our uh, Oculus phase plugs, Oculus because they look sort of like an eyeball. Uh, but what we've created is two low frequency compression drivers. So the tins in each of these combine into the, you know, are manifolded into the mouth of the horn and create a extremely high pressure, extremely high output, low frequency section um, that is able to, 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 to just play at extreme SPL levels. So this one's higher output, the FH is slightly lower output, but has more low frequency extension. The tens in the AH uh, play flat down to 100 hertz. They have extension down to 80 hertz. Uh, the FH has extension down into the mid 50s. So if you need a standalone, full frequency response loudspeaker with good pattern control, the FH is really the answer there. If you need as much output capability as possible, the AH and the, and the technology involved here is, uh, is, is, the, is the next level. Uh, here on, um, or with the AH, you generally want to have subwoofers just because for the deeper bass. With FH, you can play without them. Uh, also, the compression head technology is something I didn't touch on here. It, it basically folds the energy around to make the cabinet not so deep. You know, if these woofers were, um, were at the, on the end of a horn, that cabinet would want to be about, you know, this, this much deeper. So, so it makes the cabinet not have to be as deep while still maintaining pattern control. So the FH, full range, full passive, one amplifier channel, AH, is bi-amplified, two amplifier channels, slightly higher output, similar pattern control with both.